Welcome back to Martins and More. My name is Maury Rutsch. And I'm Spoon Phillips. And what do you expect to talk about today, Spoon? Or should I say, X marks the spot. And there was another one. No, wait. Um, <laughs> well, that's extra clever. The remastered X series from Martin Guitar is the topic of the day. Spoon, this is pretty exciting. I know Martin made this big to do a couple weeks ago about the GPCE Inception which we also talked about on the podcast. But in some ways, I wouldn't be surprised if this specific announcement might be even more, not more useful, but might reach more guitar players sooner and might make a bigger impact when it comes to what Martin Guitar was before and after uh, the 2024 NAMM show happens. What do you think about the effects this is going to cause uh, when you look at the way the X-Series is changing? Well, I think it's very exciting. I think the X-Series... Um, has often been looked at as their entry level uh, series to make them competitive both overseas and domestically in terms of a certain price point. And, um, but to the general Martin playing population, they've always been sort of looked down on as the poor relations. Um, and because, partially because of the price point, compared to something like a D45 or D41, the traditional Martins, uh, the X series is sort of looked like as the poor relations. And I think this uh, remastering uh, is a, which I find a much better word than reimagining. Frankly, the remastering um, not only is it a real word, but it's uh, <laughs> it's, ap- it's it's fitting for this because they've done a spectacular job with uh, making improvements to the X series uh, where they can, and uh, and that includes visually. They know that people within a, a certain price point, when they go into one of the big guitar stores where they have a bunch of different brands that are all below a thousand dollars, that looks matter. And the new X series look uh, fantastic and a major, uh, major upgrade as far as I'm concerned, even though some of the X series guitars already looked pretty cool. Well, since you're the insider, can I ask you to tell us something out of school? Did they ever spend any time considering just calling it the re re reimagined X series, or was that never <laughs> on the table? Well, don't think I didn't try, but. Um, oh. But I certainly would have tried to dissuade them from doing that. But yes, the remastered <laughs> X-Series. And uh, all of them have some of the same uh, improvements to them. So maybe we will talk quickly about some of that and then go through the different models. Because these are replacing the previous X-Series. So the only models available on the website as of yesterday are these new models. And they're available in a variety of sizes, which I think was very smart on their part. And uh, they're doubling down on uh, fabulous-looking back and sides and tops. For those who are not familiar with the X-Series, we should point out that these guitars are... The backs and sides are made from high-pressure laminate, known as HPL. And this is an environmentally friendly uh, material. It is... uh, It's... A much more rugged and weather resistant than uh, than traditional solid wood or even uh, even uh, the plywood, you know, layered wood that they that you would see on uh, lower end guitars, and it also allows them to put photographic images on them. So they have chosen, and they spend a lot of time going through a lot of beautiful wood including Chris Martin's private stash of Brazilian rosewood and uh, that, you know, is only going to be used on those super expensive, uh, you know, six-digit instruments and as well as, uh, as, well as beautiful figured koa, uh, figured mahogany, uh, just gobsmacking zero cote, uh, you know, beautiful figured zero cote and... Um, and you have a uh, different options based on the on the size, um, and something else that they're doing that's new. Instead of each uh, guitar looking exactly alike, 
they are not exactly randomizing, but they are moving the the wood around. So as we see with these amazing Cocobolo models, they're highly figured, and there's actually some blonde sapwood uh, patterns going up um, the center of the backs. And depending on the model, the, the image that you see is actually different, even if it's from the same piece of wood that was copied. But not only that, according to Ramin Shagan, who is the, one of the brilliant minds at Martin behind this stuff, is that um, you're going to be able to find uh, a model that's in that Zircote that will be out there that won't have any sapwood at all or will have a very little of it compared to other models. So this will make more, more sense when you guys see them. But um, very cool. Um, the tops in the one level of the X's that say X1, they have HPL tops. So, um, that, so that also will then have a photographic representation of something like uh, a, a spruce top or, or a mahogany top or a koa top, for example. And um, the two level, the ones that say X2, they have solid spruce tops. Or um, at least in one model's case, you also have the option of a solid sapeli top. And the sapeli that's being used is uh, really gorgeous. So um, at least certainly in the, the models, uh, the model that's being taken to the NAM show and being displayed at the factory, the sapeli they're using is, is really primo, gorgeous ribbon uh, sapeli. So it's... Uh, they're going all out, and that's just about the cosmetic aspect of it. The uh, one series, the one level guitars, they have a, a neck made from a birch laminate that I think has always looked very attractive, a very thin pinstripe look to it. Um, it's actually, they're using a birch laminate that's, the particular manufacturer has a, a name brand for it, Stratabond. I think Martin mm -hmm. is moving away from using Stratabond in their official language because they may eventually be... Uh, um, possibly going with, you know, a different birch laminate. But for right now, these current models, I think, still have Stratabond birch, birch laminates. But the two level woods have solid, uh, solid wood necks. And I don't know if they're actually one piece necks. They're probably not one piece necks anymore these days. But it's either they're either made out of uh, sipo, which is a uh, very dense African mahogany. Or Sapeli, which is also a dense, but not quite as dense, African mahogany, depending on availability. So you're getting a solid neck on the twos and a solid top, solid wood top. Um, and on the twos, you're getting a uh, select hardwood fingerboard and bridge. And that's going to be either Cadillacs, and I can't remember what the other wood is right now that they use for that, but it's really based on dependability, but very similar uh, very similar looking wood that resembles mm. rosewood. So very attractive. The rosettes have been upgraded. They had what they was basically a mother of pearl pattern. This is not real shell. It's definitely made of some other material. But um, that's been upgraded to uh, material that looks much more like multicolored abalone. So that looks mm. really attractive. And, uh, but there's other things. You, got, you have improved tuners. You've got a very smooth, I think they're 18 to 1 ratio tuners. This is a major upgrade for the X-Series. Uh, even, even the strap button's been upgraded. Um, and so uh, they, they look great. And all of them have a faceplate on the headstock that's very attractive and has a, a, a pattern to it that looks like figured wood, similar to the, the backs and sides. So in terms of walking into a showroom that has a bunch of Yamahas and Alvarez's and, and uh, you know, some of the uh, more affordable levels of Taylor's and some of their competitors, these guitars really are going to really stand out and, and really uh, impress some people with just their good looks. And then they still have the same uh, very good sound that the X-Series gives you. So quick question, you were talking about the X-Series and some of them, like an X2, might have a Cocobolo back and sides that reveal sapwood and another one that might not. Could they both be on the same exact model or is the GPC X2 likely to have sapwood and the OM or the triple O 
You know what I mean? Is, is it model dependent? Yes. Well, well, we'll just point out that right now, Coco Bolo is available in an O size, a double O size, and a GPC size. And based on the photos that are out, it's obvious how, how the image shifts based on. So it's clearly the same piece of amazing, amazingly f- uh, cool uh, I'm trying to word, think of the word, but just the patterns in the wood, the natural patterns in the real piece of Zeracote that was used to make this is, is really fabulous. And so it's it, all three backs that look different on the examples that are out there in photos. But in my conversation with Hermine, he definitely, and I didn't actually write it down, but he definitely implied that you can go out there and look for the same model out there and different dealers are going to have the guitars themselves are purposely going to be uh, repositioned. They're not all going to be identical. So not all the GPCs are going to have the exact same looking back. The back's going to vary. And that then brings it in, even though this is HPL with a photographic image of that's basically painted on this guitar that it still gives a sense of, of individuality to these models yeah. that they didn't previously have. That's really cool. I mean, I, I don't know if, if anybody out there that used to buy the OX1E, for example, cared that theirs looks exactly like someone else's, but having that option and being able to find something like you just said as a good example, you might see somebody at NASFest say, I've got the same guitar, let's see them. And it's not that they're showing both real pieces of Zeracote or real pieces of Coco Bolo, but it's the individuality that comes along with, I love the way that guitar looked. And let's be honest, somebody two years ago went shopping for an OX1E, they weren't going to go hunt for the best looking one because they're all cookie cutter. And that was, you know, there's a reason for that too. Are you a little surprised if I could ask you to answer personally, not factually? Uh, This series has been around more than 20 years now. And it's one of those situations to me, it's kind of like a, why didn't I think of that moment? At any time, somebody at Martin could have suggested, why don't we revamp the X series with new pictures of prettier looking wood? And as I say this out loud, I can almost tell what you're going to tell me now. Maybe this was brought up two years ago, four years ago, one year ago, and it finally just came to fruition as far as production is concerned. But they could have made these look different at any time, couldn't they? Well, I don't know how long ago it goes. I know that Chris Martin was always big on don't break something that doesn't need fixed. And and so I think they were pretty happy with the X-Series. And at first they were very happy with how... Uh, beautiful, the figured Koa looks on the on the D1X Koa, you know, and so forth. So they didn't see any reason to change it. And um, but I I'm not sure where the impetus came from this. But I have to make uh, two corrections. One is I realized I just jumped tracks there. We were talking about the Coca Bolo models. I mentioned Zero Cody, but the 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 uh, Coca Bolo also looks really fabulous. Um, the other one is for a second there. Um, everybody might, uh, some people out there may remember the X Series guitars that had cowboys painted on the top or Felix the Cat. The way they were using those printed images, so so you could have paintings of things and people or whatever, and not just wood. And for a second there, I thought you were saying somebody at the factory was suggesting putting nude photos of pretty, and then you said wood, and I realized you meant new photos of. Pretty. And I thought, hmm. Well, I, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't mean what you thought. But, uh, and I was immediately <laughs> picturing, you know, they had the poker playing dogs. I was immediately picturing like a deck of cards with the 1940s pinups on them or whatever. But uh, <laughs> Well, let me go on record. There is nothing that could look worse than those poker dogs. Even if there were ugly naked people walking poker dogs, those poker dogs by themselves, are. St- that's my opinion. I uh, and he's sticking to it, ladies and gentlemen. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what the impetus was. I don't know if this is something new in their technology that allows them to make this kind of change without much effort. Maybe it's a randomization where whatever program is d- used to set this stuff up. I don't know uh, the, what's behind that. That's going to be an interesting question to ask. Mm-hmm. And. Um, but I do know these guitars look great. Another individuality feature of it in this two level is because you have real wood for the fingerboard and the bridge instead of a environmentally friendly synthetic uh, product that they have on the one version. Um, 
uh, that's also going to be individual because no two fingerboards are going to look alike. No bri two bridges are going to look alike. Um, that's the other thing they're very excited about. Some people already know on some of the other Martin models, we've already seen this new bridge. Um, the traditional Martin bridge where the where the where you have the bridge pins kind of on a plateau and then it comes down to the thinner wings and that is very squared off. And some modern Martins, starting with the, uh, with the S, SC models, they've smoothed those out. And I think also uh, one of the recent signature models, um, oh, come on. Uh, oh, Rich Robinson. Rich Robinson. Rich Robinson's uh, basically it's a authentic series version of taking his dad's 1950 D8, D28 and making a replica of it um, for him and for sale. And the one thing he wanted, he wanted to get away from those ledges on the bridge because he did so much palm muting and it hurt his hand. So he asked him to smooth those out. Mm -hmm. And they're now doing that on the X series. The X series has that. Uh, I don't know if it's the exact same thing you got on the Rich Robinson, but you don't have those edges anymore. It's much smoother and much more conducive for uh, palm muting. So I think that's very cool. So there, uh, you know, and and it also looks cool too. So so maybe we can go through uh, one uh, model at a time. We have the OX2E. So. Perhaps you can explain the nomenclature. Yes, and while I do that, I want to invite you guys, if you are technically proficient like I am, where you can multitask and do two things at once, I, I say that because I can't, but if you want to go over to onemans.com, one man's with a Z, and follow along, you can look at the Martin Guitar New X Series models for 2024. Uh, you can certainly scroll back and forth and see some really great high resolution pictures and some of the things we're going to talk about or all the things we're going to talk about should be there on a landing page for you. But the nomenclature, when you look at the X series, if it has the number one in the model, traditionally it's high pressure laminate, backsides and top and graduating to the two, something like an OX2E, the fact that there's a two in the name means the top is solid tone wood, so it's solid wood. A uh, solid spruce top would be on a guitar that has two in it. Uh, there is one instance, like Spoon said a few minutes ago, it might be a solid sapeli top, but the number two graduates away from a full HPL construction and does give you a wooden top. So traditionally, I know when, when the X-Series first came out, everything was HPL everywhere, and it wasn't until the, the series was a little bit older, maybe even a year, that they graduated and offered you the wooden top. And when they did that... Uh, he probably wouldn't be upset if I told you Tim Teal would let me go on the record for him and say he was extremely proud. And at least back then, he really thought that when you're looking at the X-Series guitars, those that have the wooden top are, without a doubt, uh, probably the best value in buying an instrument at a budget price. So if you're going to spend that kind of money on an instrument to get HPL backsides and top, but you can reach a little bit higher and go for the one that has the, the solid wooden top, he was extremely convinced that's the way to go. And it really still stays true here. I, I haven't heard the new models yet. We're recording this podcast just a week or so before we're both going to get the opportunity to play these at the Martin factory. But I, I can't see on paper why anything would change. If you're looking at something in the remastered X series, if you can reach up to get a solid wooden top, I think it would almost always be worth your while. And maybe Spoon, you can... Uh, uh, devil's advocate me here if I'm a little bit wrong to say that as a blanket statement. There might be times where because of the guitar's body size, maybe a smaller body to someone's ear might sound more pleasing if the top is not uh, giving you extra brightness and extra projection. I know in the past we've sold a lot of O and double O size X-Series guitars with the HPL top because they either uh, don't artificially boost the high end or people like the fact that the top end on an HPL top is a little bit muted and that actually works towards a good tone because the body of the guitar is not giving anybody any kind of uh, exaggerated bass. So that's kind of the way the ones and the twos work. But do you kind of find the same thing when you're deciding to go with a, a solid top or not? That's an interesting point. I hadn't thought about that. I did have a, I had a, a flatmate here who had a DX1 and I was always so impressed with how pretty it sounded. And, you know, when you go out around the stores, I realized that 
you had mentioned cookie cutter. They pretty much all sound exactly the same, but it's still a very good sound, especially for the money. Um, you go into almost any shop and you'll be told it's definitely worth upgrading to the solid wood top. One of the reasons is uh, the soundboard is the main instigator and provider of the tone of the guitar. Um, back and sides woods can add some coloring effect to, to it as they absorb and reflect the sound waves that are coming from the soundboard, which is the real name of the top. The other reason is uh, as solid wood tops uh, get older and get played more and more and more and more, they sound better and better and better. So the guitar always is going to continue to sound better and more complex and all that, regardless of what the back and sides are made out of. So those are different arguments. I would say the biggest argument for why you might want a, a one level rather than a two level is if you are going to be playing it, playing it exclusively plugged in and through big uh, sound systems and big PAs that might be uh, f you know, prone to feedback. That's a, a problem with wooden guitars is they're the natural materials, the way the sound uh, waves are generated and reflected, uh, there's no way to control that and um, you can run into certain frequencies that, that will uh, basically um, become cyclical and overload and cause feedback. So I could see somebody wanting, uh, the, you know, liking to have a one because for the plug and play aspect of it. Now, when we mentioned the nomenclature, so X is the X series, two is the level or one, E stands for the electronics. These are all acoustic electric instruments. Um, and so um, what do you know about um, that, that change in the X series this year? Um, I'm really trying to think. I don't know that prior to 2024, if I'm remembering correctly, they were all acoustic electric before, too. I don't think they had the same system, but I can't off the top of my head think of a of an X-Series pre-remastered uh, that wasn't electronics, and that's really their, uh, their commitment to, to basically saying, if you're going to buy a guitar at this price point, you're going to get electronics. And I'm not sure it's really fair to say everybody who wants an X-Series wants to plug in um, but I, I think they're probably looking at the market, and I'd be surprised if you want to spend between, what are we looking at, 500 bucks and, and 900 bucks. You probably get pickups with the competition, and that was probably you know just par for the course. If Martin's going to come and ask you to consider their brand versus someone else, you don't want to hear anybody saying, yeah, but with the Yamaha, you get the electronics, or with the Alvarez, it's... Um, I, I don't remember an X-Series, now that you say it uh, to my face... That wasn't plugged in. Do you, am I misremembering the the old? I version? don't remember. That's a very good question. I don't remember if all the those cowboy models and stuff were always acoustic electrics. But the big change is the X series always had Fishman electronics, and they were Fishman MX pickups most recently, and they're not any longer. They have gotten away from Fishman. These are oh. now Martin brand pickup systems, and it's a proprietary system that Martin has been developing for some time. The major difference is, uh, in addition to having a volume and tone uh, wheels inside the base side of the sound hole, um, you also have um, a onboard pickup inside the treble side. I'm sorry, not pickup tuner uh, that has a you know LED light and um, works very well, and it also mutes the signal. So you when you're tuning and you tune and you have the tuner on, you don't. Uh, go into the system so the audience doesn't hear you tuning. And also back in the bass side, uh, I think under the volume button is, uh, under the volume wheel is the button to turn on the tuner. But the big improvement is on under the uh, tone wheel, you have a button that's a phase shift. And this is a new thing so that you can reverse the phase, which... Uh, matters in terms of what sound system you're going into. And basically what you do is you just test it, and they usually say, go with the one that has the most bass. So any system you plug into, it could be um, out of phase with the pickup. And so this button just immediately switches the phase for you. And that's, uh, that's I consider, a, a very cool thing. So this is a new pickup system. Uh, Martin is basically um, 
I don't know what the relationship with Fishman is like going forward. We know they've started using LR bags systems and in, in several of their models. And so um, this is a, a big change for 2024 in the new uh, remastered X series. Now, the last part of the model name, um, basically this model we're talking about, the OX2E, it's actually O-X2E. Um, the right side of the dash, X is the series, two is the level within the series, E stands for electronics. Um, on the left side is the number zero, or, um, which is why some people call, uh, use the word ought or not, um, particularly old timers when they're talking about Martin models. Um, so O is the body size. So Martin didn't make size O's for a really long time. In the early, early 20th century, they were arguably the most popular size. And uh, up until you get into the 1930s. And, um, but then they just disappeared. Once the Dreadnoughts came out, people wanted bigger and bigger guitars. Um, yep. Ukulele craze came back, and small guitars became popular again. And, and uh, the O size is still a full-size acoustic guitar, but it's certainly smaller and uh, more portable and, and fun, really, particularly uh, for people who are smaller in stature as it is. But, um, but they're still a full size. They have the same string scale as the double O and the triple O sizes. But uh, what's your opinion of the O size compared to other instruments that Martin makes? Yeah, I think the O size and the double O size, I've, I've been on record, as a matter of fact, as recent as a, a few days ago with a customer on the phone. I'm in the camp that I'm a little bit surprised that Martin still offers both. And I don't, this is a really lazy take. But when I look at a Dreadnought and I want to go down to an OM, I see a good difference. Going to a GPC is a good difference. When you get into triple O, double O, and single O, uh, as I say this, I might change my answer a little bit, but I definitely recognize going from triple O to single, and I recognize that they're all still offered because people still want to buy them. But if I were going shopping for an O, and I, I called the dealer and they said it was in stock and got there and it wasn't, but they had a double O, I would just get that. I, I think they're so similar. I know that when I have done blind tests, I can tell there's a difference, but I think the diminishing returns really happens there. And I, I'm, I'm really ex excited and happy to see that Martin does give you something so small in the X series, because when you look at people who want to buy something that's comfortable on the couch or something for travel, they don't always want to go all the way down to a junior. So I still understand why they're available. Um, but it's the one body size that I really don't have a, a ton of experience with besides playing them on our, our weekly YouTube programs or, you know, checking them out before, when they come in and when they go out for a customer. I'm so much more well-versed in the OM triple O and then everything bigger than that. The, uh, the O's, I don't want to say they're, they escape me, but I, I don't have the real life uh, experience. I mean, I have a double O 12 fret that I've owned since 2004 but I never went looking for a single O, and, and maybe that's part of the redundancy that I mean. But I, I, I think it's really, uh, it's a good move. It just doesn't land uh, f for me as a player like it might with some other people. Well, I, I find the O um, is a bit of an anomaly and a, an anachronism in some respects. Um, you said you had your 0012 fret. The difference between a 12 fret body and a, and a 14 fret body is uh, is a big difference when you come to smaller bodies. You definitely get a fuller uh, sound in general and a fuller voice with more bass from the 12 fret version. Um, so a 14 fret O, like you said, I think it's a, it's a real guitar that's small enough to be considered a travel guitar, particularly for people who already have larger instruments. It's also good for kids and it's good for more uh, petite uh, players in general. And, but like you said, the difference between the O and the double O, uh, I think, is you just get a little more volume and a little more projection and a little more bass out of the double O. So I find it fascinating that uh, Martin decided to go with an O in the X series. And um, again, I think there, is, there are definitely people out there who want uh, smaller guitars for a variety of reasons. And um, I can't think of any artists right now that I know play O's. I mean, I know Leon Redbone would play an O once in a while. And as opposed to Joan Baez with her 12 fret O that she was famous for playing uh, in terms of a 14 fret O in modern times. Um, 
uh, is it, uh, what's her name, Faust, I think uh, that independent artist, I think she might play an O at times, but I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but, but I would look at, you know, if you're into it, you could certainly uh, Google artists that play o size Martins, and there's definitely people out there. The interesting thing is, I think, we get used to things. We get used to a certain amount of bass, so when we play a guitar that has less bass, we can equate that to having no bass at all, which isn't really true, and you can definitely <laughs> find people out there playing O's and double O's that in, and, and can get plenty of bass, um, and which reminds me, I, there's a, I'll talk to you off camera about this, but a guitar you were playing in your uh, one of your inventory shows that it was like, how on earth are you getting that much bass out of that guitar? So I'm going to talk to you about that <laughs> another time. But um, Deal. So that is the O, and the OX2E is available with the, the Cocobolo pattern on the back that's got that sapwood here and there in the center stripe, like in the center seam area. And um, that's also available as the double OX2E, which I guess we're kind of covering the same thing. They basically have the same uh, construction. Um, the, the version that they have on the photographs that they're you know, presenting for NAM is an um, interesting uh, like waterfall bear claw looking top. So I think that's very cool. Of course, you're never going to get the same top on it on every instrument, but they are definitely choosing some very attractive solid spruce tops for these instruments. Again, realizing that aesthetics and cosmetics, um, their research has shown really a matter a lot when it comes to people who are going out and spending between five hundred and a thousand dollars for a guitar that looks really matter, and so they've spent a lot of time finding. Uh, some very attractive looking wood on the double O. Uh, I think double O's uh, are one of those surprise guitars that for Dreadnought players, or even OM players, they seem small, but once you're outside listening to somebody else play them, they have a, they have a great deal of projection and a, and a very good voice with you know, a, plenty of bass and balance, just not as much bass as you get as you go up that tree. Um, now, here's the interesting thing. You can have the O X2E and the double O X2E uh, with the Cocobolo pattern. And just again, this is not Cocobolo, it's HPL, but it has the photographic image of beautiful Cocobolo on the outside of it. And, uh, but when you go up to the triple O size in this new uh, remastered X series, um, it's actually photographic a representation of Primo Brazilian Rosewood. So the triple O X2E with the new Martin pickup and the solid wood fingerboard and bridge um, and uh, is actually Brazilian Rosewood and it's a piece of uh, beautifully figured Brazilian Rosewood that has come from Chris Martin's private stash. So I think that's uh, fascinating that they've chosen to do that. I'm going to try to see if I can catch you. Uh, we can recreate that scene from Step Brothers. We both try to think of the same thing. Count backwards from three. If you had to kill the O or the double O, you can only keep one, and you are Thomas Ripsom or whoever's going to make the decision, which body size has to go? Three, two, one, Two and a half, 17. I'm sorry. I was totally wrong. <laughs> I think the I think the double O if if you could only keep one I think the double O would go because you have a nice graduation from the triple O all the way down to the That's O. That's fascinating. I thought for sure you would say the opposite because you were so prejudiced against small guitars that have no bass. But <laughs> um, but uh, sizist, you're a si you're again can't call you a bassist because you you are a bassist, but it means something different <laughs> when where you're concerned. Um, but yeah, Whatever. so you have a triple O traditional triple O short scale neck. And, um, in fact, hold on, I'm going to call up the specs here, because I want to make sure I have this correct. Hold on one yeah, second. Yeah, let me stop you there. While you're looking for that, This that brings up a question I was going to ask earlier. Are these O's and double O's definitely short scale? Yes, they're all, they're all short scale. They're all 24-9. But what I wanted to look up, I want to make sure that I had this correct. So, yes, this is available uh, with the figured Brazilian rosewood pattern back and sides. But... Um, one thing I forgot to mention that all of these instruments have, they have a redesigned fingerboard. It is that it, this is a 
a much shallower fingerboard. It's the same depth of a fingerboard that you get on the Authentic series. Martin only started doing this back when the Authentic series came out as individual models that were copied from one vintage Martin. And one of the things they found in common is they were using much thinner fingerboards back in the 30s. And so they, um, and this makes the, this makes the neck lighter. They also have a beveled edge, which is uh, new for Martin. And this is something that they're going to put on the X series. We may start seeing these on other guitars. There's a beveled edge to make gripping the neck more comfortable. And I'm trying to think what they actually call it. Um, let me see if I have it here right in front of me in my notes. Did I write this down? Is it like a rolled edge? Sometimes people call it rolled fingerboard edges. Well, they, they specifically use the word beveled. But let me just see if I look in here and see... Oh, here it is. Gently beveled comfort edge. Mm. And yes, this is not a product to uh, ease you uh, when you are been on the tractor for too long or something like that. This is, in <laughs> fact, uh, this is, in fact, the edge of the fretboard has been beveled for your comfort. Um, one of the reasons they did this, according to someone in there, who I, I probably won't mention, always mention names, somebody in the factory said that this is really more important about the one level because people had, have uh, mentioned to Martin that they feel out of balance because the neck's heavy. So they feel like that, that Stradivon neck is heavy compared to a wooden neck, and the thinner fretboard is helping that. It's helping make it feel mm -hmm. not quite so heavy, and also in general, making the neck feel more comfortable. So these all have the performing artist profile, which I have always liked. It's a neck profile that was invented for the old performing artist series, which was really came out, um, uh, was really all about introducing the grand performance body size. And once that got in, moved into the standard series and, and the other series, they didn't really feel the need to keep the performing art of series around. So they've, they've absorbed some of that stuff into other series. And that very comfortable neck shape, which I always felt was really designed to attract uh, electric guitarists who weren't used to traditional thicker acoustic guitar necks, um, that still retained on the, on the uh, X series instead of the modified low oval that you get and the guitar is made in Nashville, Pennsylvania. Um, so I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm 90% sure that people know what you're talking about. But just in case it deserves a little bit more clarification, the thinner neck, uh, where we almost always say thick neck and thin neck, uh, E to E or the width of it, we're talking about the depth of the neck from the fingerboard to the back of the neck in that trajectory, right? Yes, the, the shallowness of it. Um, the, the, in terms of the fingerboard, we people talk about neck widths, it's really the fingerboard width they're talking about. So um, at the nut, it's one and three quarter inch. At the 12th fret, it's two and an eighth. And the string spacing is two and five thirty seconds nominally. I think it's actually a, some metric measurement that's actually not exactly that. But, um, but this is a new feature on the X series as well that they'll probably see if people like it but they're calling this a, a refined string spacing. And so they have tweaked the string spacing at the nut. So it's not, then they don't exactly say, at least to me, um, what that means, but it's the, the, uh, the, the string spacing has been slightly adjusted for more comfortable uh, playability. And I suspect this might be related to the fact that when they came out with the high-performance neck that has this high-performance taper to the fingerboard, so it's one and three-quarter inch at, at the nut, which was became the industry standard, but it keeps the slender two and an eighth inch from Martin's old one eleven sixteenth inch neck. So you get a much faster uh, taper as you go up the neck. So it you don't have the wide two and a quarter inch uh, width that you had on the traditional OMs from the 1930s and the traditional one three quarter inch necks. So, but they decided to widen the string spacing. The old, the old fingerboards that were two and an eighth at the 12th fret had two and an eighth string spacing. They widened it a little bit to cut the difference between finger style spacing, as some people would call it, and 
and playing with the pick strumming spacing. And so the E strings are a little closer to the edge. And for people who are not very disciplined players, like me, um, it was easier to pull that high E string off of the frets. And I think I run into this occasionally on modern Martins. So I don't think it's so much the string spacing as when the, when the machines cut the frets and then they get polished, that occasionally you run into a fret where that slants at the end of the fret just comes in a little more than other frets do. And if you're playing that fret, you can accidentally pull the string off the fret. And I suspect yeah. this, this refined string spacing, uh, I, just, I just suspect that it's actually done to compensate for that uh, complaint that they probably get from time to time. Well, that's exactly what I would have said. If you made me answer that question, I probably would have phrased it exactly the same way. I think it's a very creative way for them to basically solve that issue without giving anybody online measurements and and convincing somebody that this much of a difference will feel better. They're just going to refine the string spacing and basically take that argument away. Um, I, I suspect it's going to work, but I, I think it's very deliberate that there isn't something people could go and and quantify with, well, they said they're going to move it this far, and I don't know what that's going to be a good idea. I mean, you saw the pitchforks and and uh, torches that came out with uh, a, a recent uh, Martin Bring Something New to Market, and, and people were like, ah, it's not going to work. So you don't you don't blame anybody for basically saying, we refined it and leave it at that. And I'd, I'll re reserve judgment until I play one, but I'm looking forward to see if we can get there to the factory and play some of these X-Series and see if we can't deliberately not try to pull uh, the treble E off the fretboard, but what, what that feels like, if it's still, you have to be a little bit disciplined or not. But I, I'm sure that's exactly what they were thinking. And also, I think it happens more the, the, the lighter strings you use. So for electric guitarists that, uh, that put 11s or 10s on their Martin, it's probably going to happen more often than somebody's using 12s and th or 13s. And by that, we're referring to the size of the high treble E string, the one E string. But yeah, so that's uh, so you have this refined string spacing and this beveled edge. Also, it could all be about the beveled edge because the edge of the fingerboard is slightly shaped differently and maybe they felt, oh. they, maybe they, felt they needed to compensate for that same reason for... for people who are going to, um, again, if you're not playing with a great deal of precise technique, maybe it's easier to pull the E string off of the, of the fretboard. So they adjusted it. I do know there was a, a professional fingerstyle player, and I don't remember who it is now, who played Martins and actually had the factory put on new nuts for him that just had that treble E in, pulled in just a little bit. And, oh. um, on his one and three quarter inch, uh, with the old OMs. Um, so probably because he was prone to doing that. But um, mm. but it's not like when I say you don't have precise technique, there's an awful lot of professional musicians out there in the rock and roll world um, and country music world and stuff that you know, are self-trained and do not have the, the perfect classical technique um, that people like Brian May had. But... Um, yeah, but, and I uh, think a lot of players might might be able to develop technique and just don't want to, and they want to play. Like, <laughs> I, I know people tell me all the time, you could lower your action on your guitar if you just play more comfortably. And I'm like, so? Like, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> develop. And I, that sounds really shallow, but I don't want to. I want to be me. And, and if, if over these years, I just I love being able to be a little bit reckless. Maybe there are people that want to play the way they want to play. And, and if it comes down to move the nut, or change my technique, move the knot. Maybe that's just that. Not that they can't do it; they just don't want to do it. You know. Yes, and you. I mean, you see. I was always impressed with Skunk Baxter's amazing, very you know precise, you know, music school kind of technique. But and Stevie Vai, those kind of people. But then you have Angie Partridge on the other side who broke a string during the recording of one of XTC's biggest albums and just decided to not change the st string and played the, and recorded the entire album all but one song with five strings because he just oh. didn't want to, you know, play, so he didn't particularly need a high E string apparently. But um, wow, <laughs> I believe it's a true story. But um, That's pushing it. But uh, so, you know, to each their own. Um, and... Uh, and that also goes for body sizes. So we talked about the, there's now a size zero, a size O, a size double O, and a size triple O or triple O in uh, the X series. 
and um, all of them are uh, size, uh, uh, all of them are in the level two. So they currently do not offer an HPL top one in an O, double O, or triple O, which may say something about base response. The next size up from a triple O, they do not have a long scale OM. Instead, they're going with the 21st century version of the ultra versatile non dreadnought, and that's the grand performance body size. So we have two grand performance uh, models in the uh, X series, and this is where we reach level one. You can get the GPC 1E, and you can get that in black. There will always be people out there who like black guitars. And an all black guitar with a black fingerboard and a black bridge and white dots on the, on the board, chrome tuning machines. This is an all black grand performance uh, in the level one. So it has a HPL top that is black and acoustic electric and the Stratabon neck, which is basically is like black and white zebra stripes or really kind of black and light, light gray zebra stripes looks yeah. awesome on this guitar. So, um, and so uh, that's a very cool guitar. Martin yet again has a black guitar. So if you're not a Johnny Cash fan, you can still have a, your own black guitar in the cool modern, uh, what some people would call a small jumbo. Um, it's got a deeper body than an OM, slightly deeper, uh, w slightly wider top and a slightly longer top. So it's a, uh, it's definitely a bigger than an OM and has its own unique sound. So that's very cool. Um, do you have, uh, do you have any, uh, from the previous version of the X series, do you have any black X models in stock? We do. As a matter of fact, we had another dealer call us a couple of weeks ago and asked me if we could help uh, move one of them sideways because they can't get a hold of one anymore. And I said, are you sure? Uh, you know, Martin, I'm sure they have a lot in stock. And he reminded me. <laughs> well, then I think I know what model you're talking about. You're talking about the OMC, are you? Yep, the so OMC. I, yeah. And I really, I, I got so used to Martin over the past six, seven months, they were sending dealers a, a, a little newsletter very often. We have all these X-Series guitars in stock. Who needs one? They were, you know, stockpiled, not just the OMC X20 Black, but X-Series in general seems to be, they were starting to come back in stock. Then they were back in stock. Now we have way too many back in stock. Somebody please buy these. I just got it in my mind that coming into the into the winter and then going towards the new NAM show, they were going to have a lot of X-Series. And this is something that has sold out. So we do have the OMC X1E Black in stock at the time of taping this, which is mid-January 2024. But that will be the last batch of OMC X1E blacks that we have because as you're saying it's, it's replaced with the GPC and I'm kind of I don't want to use the word surprised but if let's go backwards a few minutes in this podcast if Martin can do an O and a double O in several different flavors th th isn't there room to do an OMC and a GPC here or is there what's a good reason for getting rid of the OM I think because the uh, grand performance body size um which is analogous to Taylor's size 14 and other uh, mini jumbos, but particularly the size Taylor 14 was the one that really, really popularized the, the small jumbo. And I think that sometime around 2015, maybe more like 2017, 2018, the, that body size outsold uh, dreadnoughts all, of all makes for the first time ever. And so it was definitely becoming the body size that younger players were preferring. So I think that's why. I think they know that the people who are buying X-Series, by and large, are going to be younger. Uh, they're looking for what may be their first really uh, good quality guitar. And they are know they're in direct competition with Taylor and with other younger uh, builders out there and so um, for a younger audience and I think that's why I think the triple O and the OM um, are too similar and at some point somebody in Martin maybe it was Chris uh, probably was Chris I know the person that was responsible for making 
uh, Triple O's long scale. Uh, he retired and is gone now. And he did it purely for economics since they had, you know, they since all our guitars are long scale, these should be long scale too. And so uh, Chris or somebody said, no, we need to go back to the old fashioned Martin way. Triple O should be a short scale guitar. Um, the, the, but any guitar with that body shape should be a short scale guitar. And OMs became more the anomaly. Um, and, um, and so I think that's probably why. But so I'd be, I don't think, you know, maybe but Martin's always good at bringing things back. Um, there was a time where there were no O's and they brought back O's. Uh, M's uh, really went out in popularity, but Chris <laughs> always insisted on keeping the M36 in the line. He always insisted there always be at least one M. He always insisted there would be at least one 12-fret slot head in the Martin line as a, what he calls legacy models. I would not be surprised if we see OMs in the new uh, X-Series eventually, the new remastered X-Series. But for now, you have your choice. The first, uh, the non-dreadnought Jeep uh, long-scale body, you have the Jeep GPC-X1E and you have the gpc uh, X2E, and that's the one that has the amazing Coca Bolo that has a much bigger back, so you get a much bigger uh, display of this gorgeous uh, Coca Bolo back and sides. Um, it's highly figured. It, it looks like uh, very similar to some wild Brazilian roses I've seen over the years, and has these. Mm just, you know, really beautiful sapwood, like blonde sapwood that, you know, was made by nature, but it looks like it was, you know, designed by by an artist. So it's really, really gorgeous looking. The one, the example that they're showing is really gorgeous looking. I'll be curious to see what Ramin was hinting at when it came, when it comes to, uh, is the pattern on the back going to change from guitar to guitar? And the way he, yeah. he described it, it sounds like it will that there'll be, you know, versions of this out there that have less sapwood showing and stuff like that. Um, at least that's how I understood it. So, grand performance body size with a cutaway. Super quick trivia question, true or false, if you don't want to get the GPC X1E in black, you only have one other choice to get it, and that is a solid spruce top. That's correct. That is correct. Right now, at least, they're not offering the one in a, in a spruce pattern. And again, I think they probably have got, they know after years and years and years and years that the solid wood tops are what people really want and they sell the best. So they're offering the GP, uh, HPL top um, in this one model. Well, really, there's two models and another model coming up. But I figured we would get to that after we played 20 Questions. 20 Questions. Whose turn is it to do what with where? That's a good question. We're, but we're really bad at remembering that now. So um, so it's really 21 questions. <laughs> I feel like I have to guess the model this, this week. I think that's true. I think that's true. I think you do have to guess the model this week. So that means I have to think of one. So 20 questions. This is the game we play where one of us, in this case the smart guy, uh, has 20 questions to guess... What Martin guitar that's available for sale today uh, is in the mind of the wise guy, that would be me. And so uh, he also gets to guess up to three guesses of what model it might be, but they count toward the 20 questions. So, Mari Rutsch, you have 20 questions on the clock. Go. <laughs> Is this guitar one of the 2024 remastered X-Series? No. Is this guitar made in Mexico? Yes. And for people who don't know, the X-Series and the Road Series um, are made in the Navajoa, Mexico plant. So that narrows his choices down dramatically. Yes, it does. Is this guitar an SC? No, that's three questions. Is this guitar in the Road Series? No, that's four questions. He really went with the X Series. That's pretty, pretty interesting. 
Does this guitar have a solid top of wood? <laughs> no. Five questions. Is this guitar a 14th fret red knot? No, that's six questions. Is this guitar smaller than a triple O? No, that is seven questions. Is this guitar a triple O? No, that is eight questions. Is this guitar a GPC? I'm just picturing him with the blindfold, just almost, almost finding the, the uh, rump of the donkey. No, it is not a GPC. Is this guitar an OM? Yes, this guitar is an OM. <laughs> I want to be cocky and say donkey meat pin, but um, is this guitar the OMC X1E Black? Yes, this guitar is the OMC X1E Black. Yeah! 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 Congratulations. Tell him what he's won, Don Pardo. Oh, well, you've won my admiration, and I should know by now not to backtrack on you like that. You're too good at sniffing that out. So, Well, I, I, a few weeks ago, I, I put it to, to mind that you would never, ever choose the guitar that we just got done talking about. And I tested that theory more than once, and I thought, it's, it's going to be months and years before you, you pull that stunt. So I'm a little embarrassed I should have actually thought of that early. I was going to make one of my second... Probably choice two or three was going to be like, go for it all and see if you get it. And I was just, got a little bit scared. And then I, I don't know the X series offhand so well that I could have been that cocky. But that that was, I feel pretty good. How many was that, 10? Maybe it was the ninth now, but I think it was, it might have been the ninth, actually. Maybe the ninth. Ooh, you'd have to look back, but yes. But still very good. Now the GPC X2E has... Uh, one special feature right now is it is the one guitar that's available with a solid Sapele top. And I mentioned this earlier uh, in the podcast, the, uh, the top on the model that they have in the photos is just gorgeous. with This big, wide, perfectly straight copper banding that is a natural phenomenon in Sapele. It's, it shows up in all species of mahogany, but Sapele typically has it by default, but this is really gorgeous. And I'm really hoping, I don't know if they're going to have one of these at the uh, factory when I go there next week to uh, do my reviews for One Man's Guitar, but, but um, I really want to see one of these because they look really great with, the, uh, with that back and that, and that uh, front. And, um, and I um, also wanted to point out too, hold on one second, I th also wanted to point out that the Sapele one has a uh, Zeracote back and sides. And this is just an outrageous uh, looking guitar. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It looks like a, it looks like a you know, museum worthy guitar. So I really hope they have one of these in the factory. I wanna hear what the Sapele top sounds like on a GPC body with that HPL back and sides. But you know, I just, this is a mouse wateringly beautiful guitar. Do you wanna say mouth watering this time instead of mouse watering? No, I was talking about mouth watering. I mean, they grow faster if you <laughs> <laughs> mouth watering. That's because my mouth was watering and I couldn't pronounce it ah. properly. Just thinking about that gorgeous guitar. <laughs> so this now leads us into out of the GPC. So you have those two GBCs, one level one with a uh, black body, one level two with the gorgeous Cocobolo. And then you have three dreadnoughts. We have three dreadnoughts. The D... X1E. Now, this is an existing model. Um, the DX1E that's available in figured, beautiful figured Koa wood uh, print pattern. That uh, Koa wood is, of course, uh, exclusive to the Hawaiian Islands. So it is technically an American uh, domestic uh, tone wood. 
but it's from the Hawaiian Islands. And you can also get it in a very pretty, I'll say figured mahogany. I don't think it's quite uh, quilted mahogany. But this uh, has a top that looks like gorgeous, extremely expensive uh, Hawaiian koa wood or um, figured mahogany. So it is not uh, a uh, top that looks like spruce. So very pretty. Gives you the classic X series with the HPL top. You know, you get a good base. You get a very distinct uh, mid-range, very pretty ringing treble with a great deal of sustain. Um, just You just don't get the same dynamics and uh, harmonic dynamics that you get from the solid wood tops. Um, would you say that's an accurate assessment of the HPL dreadnought compared to the spruce dreadnought, spruce top dreadnought? I really would. Yeah, I think it's a very even. It's compressed, and I don't mean that as a dig or as a, as sometimes when you say compression, you say squashed and pushed down. I think it's a very level. You don't get a lot of, uh, I mean, you don't have dynamic range, so you can, we can call that a positive or a negative, but you, you could pretty much just start playing the guitar and it's going to be this nice consistency. And um, that, that, I'm not going to lie, some of the best things about playing guitar are being able to really get dynamic about something, but it's a very refined, uh, very polite sound, if, if that's uh, if I could exaggerate a little bit. I, I would agree with you. Well, I think it's a good so, uh, singing, uh, a singing guitar. They, I think these guitars are very good for accompanying vocals. Uh, they don't get in your way. They don't overwhelm you. And... Um, and it's a pretty sound, and it's for for the money, for the I don't know this year they're probably six hundred bucks, but but f compared to, you know, a three thousand dollar guitar, uh, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to pick one of these up in a shop and play them and walk right out the door with them because they probably have never heard a guitar at that price that looks as good as this and sounds as good as this does, and that's so that's the one dreadnought in the one level of the X series, uh, the second dreadnought is, of course, the DX2E. That has got a solid spruce top. And this is available in three options. Uh, you have that outrageous zero cote uh, pattern with a sunburst top. Um, then you can also have it in the uh, quilted mahogany or the Brazilian rosewood pattern. Now, this is a same pattern that's used on the triple O X2E, same Brazilian rosewood pattern from the same piece of, of you know, insanely expensive Brazilian rosewood that is from Chris Martin's private stash that was used for the, to make the photographic images on this XPL back. Um, and I think the quilted mahogany back is probably the same quilted mahogany back that's used in the DX1, I don't remember. But it's that Zero Cote with the sunburst that's the real, you know, glory in, in terms of these new cosmetics. Uh, really gorgeous. And then, what is the one X-series guitar we're saving for last that we haven't mentioned that's different from all the rest? DX2E <laughs> Brazilian 12-string. Wow. Yippee! Yes, indeed. I'm looking at that right now on onemans.com. <laughs> so, yes. So, the X-series has a new Dreadnought 12-string guitar. And it's, uh, it looks great, and I can't wait to hear this, too. I've never owned a 12-string. I've always said I'm going to own a 12-string. I could never justify, justify the price. I'm looking very forward to seeing this guitar in person. Uh, Ramin said he couldn't promise me they'd have one ready uh, and available when I, the day I'm there because they, the only one uh, that's completed or th that's in the States will probably be out in Anaheim. But he said he's going to look into it and see if they can get one for me to see. So that would be really cool because I'm really anxious to to play this 12-string guitar, really anxious to see what the string spacing is like. I bet you it's going to be really good for finger style. Not every 12-string is. Martin's gotten better at that over the years. And uh, But more importantly, having a 12-string guitar for under $700, uh, I'm really looking forward to... Uh, to the opportunity this presents to me and a lot of other uh, musicians that may not be able to justify a more expensive 12-string but always wanted to have that 12-string jangle in their life. And I can tell you honestly from past videos we've done on, on YouTube where we have the, the inventory show on Wednesdays and we might have played sometimes two or three 12-strings in one show, this stacks up 
uh, when I say this, the X series 12 string platform totally stacks up with things in the 16 series and even the, the standard series. When you put that in front of a microphone and let viewers listen to an X series 12 string versus stiffer competition, it's, I don't know if it's uh, fair to say because it's 12 strings, it just has an unfair advantage, but it's very, very rare for our viewership to watch that program and say, well, you could really tell the X-Series wasn't all that. The X-Series 12 strings, going back as long as I've ever sold them and had them in stock at, at Maury's Music, they really are a, a really, really good sound. And then plugged in, I mean, I haven't heard this new Martin pickup system yet, but uh, assuming it's going to have some you know, lineage in common with traditional undersaddle pickups that have volume and tone. Uh, the fact that it's got the phase reverse, which I failed to mention when you talked about earlier, is extremely helpful in fighting feedback. If you wheel back and forth or select back and forth on the phase switch, you want to choose the one that has the most bass if everything sounds okay. But once you have low bass feedback, uh, most often flipping that in reverse you know, it just saves saves the entire show. So I think the X series having a 12 string, uh, I'll go on record to say it's probably never going to go away. They're going to every year, every so many times they launch the products. You might lose an OM for a GPC, or you might have small bodies, but no OM. I doubt Martin would ever consider bringing the X series to market year after year without at least having one. Well, probably having one 12 string in the market. You know. Again, it's, it's part of their philosophy of at least having one somewhere and uh, it, within the lineup, and to have one at this price point is a really good idea, but there, I've never seen anything that looks as good as this, so I, I'm just so uh, really impressed with what it looks like. In fact, I'm a little surprised this is not available in the, in the burst, um, co you know, in the, uh. in the um, Zero Cody sunburst, and maybe it will be at some point. But it's uh, but it's still a beautiful looking guitar, and uh, and yeah, there's just something special about that 12 string sound. Um, I was just uh, watching an old, early Gordon Lightfoot video the other day on YouTube of him playing his big old 12 string, and how particularly if you've got other instruments and other guitars and stuff, did having that high end 12 string uh, harmonic mixing in with them is is uh, always an added treat in song circles or wherever you are. So so that is the lineup on the new remastered X-Series from CF Martin and Company. And bully for them, um, but it sounds like it's a good opportunity to get out there and go to some place like Maury's Music to, if you're looking for an OM in the X-Series, because they're not offering one anymore, as well as other X-Series guitars that are available for sale right now that you don't have to wait for. Um, so, so, you know, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I shouldn't wait any longer before I tell you, we still have guitars in stock like the OX1E, Double OX2E, Triple OX2E, DX1E Koa, and more. Uh, please navigate over to marismusic.com and check out the Martin Guitar X series. We do have a lot of them in stock. And again, it's, it's one of those things where just like when they change, slightly change the juniors, just like when they add and subtract a couple of uh, features from different models, every time they bring a new series or a new remastering to market, there are going to be those people that like the guitars the way they were before. And quite honestly, whether you buy them here or somewhere else, uh, this does not diminish the value and the, the importance of how good the X-Series guitars are pre-2024. So if you find yourself in a few months looking for an X-Series and you either don't want to wait for the 2024s or something about the 2024s isn't perfect for you, this is not to say that, you know, don't put the 2023 models out of your mind. There's still a lot of value there. And um, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to playing the new ones. It'll be a little while until I get to really see how to make comparisons, but I would really, when you look at the X-Series in, in the one level, I don't know that a new OX-1E is going to sound different from the first one because of the same guitar sonically. But, you know, going into the uh, idea of buying a new guitar because they look better, maybe they feel better because of the beveled edges, the thinner neck, uh, the new pickup. There are a lot of reasons that uh, it's we should all reserve judgment at least for a few more weeks to see what this new X-Series brings. But uh, don't sleep on the 2023s either. Well said as usual. 
So soon we will, uh, this year we're not going to be at the factory at the same time on the same day, but, but um, I'll make sure to uh, leave plenty of booby traps. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> Thank you. Just, in case, and just in case you're beset by boobies, and so that'll rescue you. <laughs> Here's hoping. <laughs> well, Spoon, you know what the music means. I hope today's show was X actly like you wanted it to be. I know I had a lot of fun talking this stuff with you. I want to sincerely thank everybody for listening. We have to thank our Patreon friends again, too. Thank you very much for being here behind the scenes. Looking forward to everything Martin's going to bring to NAM, and I, I just really can't wait to hear Spoon's interpretations and full reviews on onemans.com as well. From all of us at Martin's and more, thanks for listening. Hear you later. Hear you later.